Now, live from Wish TV, this is 24 Hour News 8's Daybreak. Well, we are watching a weather alert for you this morning. It is brutally cold across central Indiana. Temperatures are in the single digits in some spots. If you're lucky, a lot of us are negative below zero, and school delays keep rolling in. We just wanted to get this over with because it has been so long. It's been four years, and finally we're coming to an end. Happening today, arguably the final chapter of the Richmond Hill home explosion story. Montserrat Shirley is set to learn her fate. All new on Daybreak, hear from people who were there that night and who still live there today. Also today, members of the Electoral College cast their formal votes to make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. We're taking a look at Indiana's role in the Electoral College. And if you are planning to go to the post office today, expect some company there. <laughs> Officials say this will be the busiest day of the year with Christmas now just six days away. Welcome to Daybreak on this Monday morning. It is December 19th. And as always, we have two more hours of local news coverage coming your way. Brittany, Joe, Jessica, and Jane are all watching the top headlines. First, let's get your day started with weather and traffic. Ken is coming up with a report on an Indigo bus on fire. First, here's Randy. Yeah, I tell you what here, I need a Lauren. Good news here, we have climbed. We've gone from minus one to zero. <laughs> Back up to zero, absolutely. Got to start somewhere here. So no wind, so of course the wind chill, same as the air temperature right at that zero mark. And it is bitterly cold everywhere. Zero here, negative five in Lafayette, negative uh, six degrees now Kokomo. Kokomo's wind chill factor is six below zero, one Muncie, three Shelbyville, five Columbus. Last hour in Laporte, 22 degrees below zero. They were down to uh, minus 24, so deeper snowpack up north, and it's a lot colder up there, too. Temperatures 20, 25, 26 degrees colder this morning compared to a Sunday morning at this time. And we should see clear skies and sunshine all day long. You can see uh, clear skies from here back on the plains. Lake effect clouds, some snow showers up north, and uh, some more cloud cover down into parts of Kentucky. So forecast of the day had again, sunny skies all the way through here. 1 o'clock, 12, the wind chill factor 2 above. 3 o'clock, 16, and by 5 o'clock, high temperature about 20 degrees below average. will peak out around 18. The wind chill right around 9 degrees above zero. Make it through today. Big pattern change coming in. We're going to see some milder Pacific air. We'll tell you how warm it's going to get in my eight-day forecast in just a few minutes. Okay? All right, Randy, thank you. Traffic Watch here at the top of the 7 o'clock hour. We take you to the picture of what's been the biggest traffic problem we've had so far. This is the Indigo bus fire on the north side. Meridian and 35th. We have new information from our mobile news tracker, Kevin Rodman, who's on the scene. Kevin, what can you tell us? Well, Ken, it appears that the fire is out. Fire crews have left the scene, and just the Indigo bus remains on the far right side of the road. Now, it's parked on the right side where uh, there's enough room for two lanes of traffic to get by, but the biggest problem right now is ice remaining from the water firefighters used to fight this fire. Both southbound lanes, and I believe even one of the northbound lanes, has a patch of ice right at 35th Street. This is on Meridian, so drivers need to be aware as they're traveling through the area that there is some ice left over from this scene. Ken? Okay, Kevin Rodman on the north side. So a little bit better news. We don't have the complete restriction in the southbound lanes or near complete restriction that we had a little bit earlier. So let's go to the traffic system and show you where the location is. Again, this is on the near north side. There's Meridian. And it's still going to have a little bit of slow go and it looks like there's probably one lane of southbound traffic that's still going to be impacted until they get the Indigo bus removed from the scene. So expect slower than usual traffic here in the 7 o'clock hour as you approach that scene. And we'll keep an eye on that let you know what kind and delays develop as a result of that. A couple other problems have been developing. One report of an accident, State Road 39 and I-70. It looks like it's at the interchange there. Because you take a look at the INDOT camera showing that I-70 is moving along without any problem there. So it's mainly, it looks like, at the interchange itself. We'll also keep an eye on that one. Uh, also had an earlier accident, but this one's off on the side of the road. This is on just the near west side, 70 westbound near Harding. And that's an important distinction because most of the traffic uh, heads eastbound towards downtown here, not westbound. But you can see that's off on the side of the road. Road, and again, not causing any problems. Those are the biggest areas we've been keeping an eye on here for you, but otherwise, traffic's been moving along okay here at the top of 7 o'clock hour. All right, Ken, that is good news, especially when you consider that much of central Indiana is still under a travel advisory. Of course, this weekend we saw a mess on the roads. Most counties are included in this advisory, except for Marion County. And now you'll see that the yellow means that it's the lowest level of advisory, and it means you should just be careful, extra careful, as you're traveling around in those counties. Also today in Muncie, district leaders say schools is in session at East Washington Academy. Classes were canceled Thursday and Friday because of a problem heating the building. 
But now officials say the repairs have been made and the school is warm again. Happening today, we're entering the final chapter in the explosion that rocked a Southside community. In 2012, a home exploded in the Richmond Hill neighborhood, killing two people and damages, damaging or destroying 80 homes. Yeah, Monterey surely lived in that home. Our sentencing hearing starts today. 24 Hour News 8's Brittany Lewis spoke with a neighbor who plans to be at the sentencing today. Good morning. Good morning. It has been a long four years for the people who live in the Richmond Hill neighborhood. One of those people I talked to hopes that this sentencing for a woman who was his neighbor offers some closure for both him and the rest of his neighbors. Monserrati Shirley faces between 20 and 50 years in prison, or she could have her sentence suspended altogether. She pleaded guilty last year to two counts of conspiracy to commit arson in exchange for her testimony against two other suspects in the case, her ex-boyfriend Mark Leonard and his half brother Bob Leonard. She originally faced 54 counts. Prosecutors have said that she was a part of the plan to make her home explode, but that she did not actually rig the devices. The explosion back on November 10th, 2012, and what prosecutors say was a plot to collect insurance money, damage more than 80 homes in the Richmond Hill neighborhood, and killed Jennifer and Dion Longworth. Doug Aldridge was home that night and looked out his front door to see that the house down the street was no longer there. He plans to give a victim statement at Shirley sentencing. We just wanted to get this over with because it has been so long. It's been four years and finally we're coming to an end uh, so we can put some kind of like said, put some kind of closure on this whole uh, ordeal. I mean the, the hurt and the, and the sorrow is still going to be with us but it's another step for like I said the healing process of the community. Aldridge says his home had about $40,000 worth of damage, but he was able to stay in his home while it was being repaired. He said the hard part for him was the guilt of seeing so many of his neighbors' homes torn down and some of his neighbors moving away. Shirley's sentencing is scheduled to start at 9 o'clock this morning, and the court has set aside two days for her hearing, so we may not know her sentence by today, but possibly tomorrow. Nina. Okay, Brittany, thank you so much. And as we have been doing since the night of the explosion, we will have complete coverage of today's sentencing hearing. As we mentioned, prosecutors say they have set aside two days. We will have a reporter in the room. Watch for updates on Wish TV and wishtv.com. Also happening today, the Electoral College will officially choose the next president of the United States. It's a process that's long just been a formality, but this year things are a little different. 24 Hour News' Jessica Smith joins us to explain all about it. Good morning. Good morning. After such a dramatic election, it's no surprise the Electoral College vote is turning out to be full of controversy as well. Some are calling for a delay in the vote, while others are protesting, begging electors to vote for anyone but President-elect Donald Trump. Some electors supporting Donald Trump say they've received death threats on Online and in letters. We know at least one Republican elector from Texas has publicly said he will not vote for Trump. Take a listen. First, you'll hear from an elector who is refusing to change his vote, then an anti-Trump protester. Literally two tubs from the post office of letters asking me to change my vote from Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton. Well, at least they're going to know how a, a bunch of us feel about it as far as Trump being not the kind of representative that we want the world to look at or that I want to raise my grandchildren and, and say this is the kind of a man we want to lead our country. Another issue is Russia's involvement in the election. After several agencies determined Russia did interfere with the election, some Democrats and Republicans are calling to delay the Electoral College vote until the electors can be briefed on the issue. Electors themselves are asking for more information before they vote. The intelligence community says it will not discuss the potential hacks until the review ordered by President Obama is complete. Indiana has 11 electoral votes. The electors will vote at 10 o'clock this morning at the State House. Of course, we'll keep you updated on how this plays out today and throughout the coming weeks on Wish TV and wishtv.com. Lauren and Nina. Okay, Jessica, thanks. I want them to know that I have great love for the city. I just believed in what we were doing, and so I didn't second guess myself. What can I say? No guts, no glory. This morning, a wreath lays next to a statue of former Indianapolis Mayor Bill Hudnut. Countless other tributes are pouring in. Yeah, he died early Sunday morning. There are plans now to honor him publicly here in Indianapolis. His family says public services are being planned, uh, one in Indianapolis, one in D.C., 
No word yet on dates and times. That's right. Hudnut is credited with revitalizing downtown Indianapolis, including bringing the Colts to town. Hudnut was the city's longest serving mayor, serving four terms starting in 1976. He is credited with laying the groundwork that pulled the city out of the post World War II decline. Last year, we were lucky enough to be able to share Hudnut's final television interview with you. Our own Patty Spittler interviewed him at his Maryland home. He talked about his life in public service. You want to lead a meaningful life. You want to accomplish something. You want to have a positive purpose, regardless of who you are and where you are, and where you are on life's continuum. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. the, that's the way I feel about it. Hudnut died. Hudnut died in hospice care in Maryland following a lengthy illness. His family's not saying what that illness was, but he was 84 years old. As we mentioned, people ranging from former mayors, Colts owner Jim Irsay, to the vice president-elect are talking about Hudnut's life and legacy. We've compiled it all for you on our website, wishtv.com. Happening today, a popular Mass Ave restaurant is set to reopen after a roof collapse this weekend. An employee tells us the Eagle will open for business at 4 p.m., Fire officials are blaming the weight of water from the snow and freezing rain. No one was hurt. This morning, Indianapolis fire officials say they think Christmas lights started a fire that burned two homes. Crews say the fire started in an outside outlet being used to power the lights. This is in a southeast side neighborhood near Stop 11 and Combs Road. Crews say the fire spread through the house, then onto another house. No one was hurt. Officials say a father and son were in the second home, but they were able to get out okay. All right, it is 10 minutes after the hour right now. Happening today, if you haven't shipped your holiday packages already, you're in for a really busy day at the post office. Yeah, I want to plan a little bit of extra time. Today is the busiest mailing day of the year. 24 Hour News 8's Joe Malillo is live at the U.S. Post Office downtown and joins us with the story. Hi, Joe. Hey, ladies. Yeah, you know what? People are already here, already starting to work and ship that, those packages out. Now, if you haven't done it just yet, expect the crowds today. You might want to head a little bit early to avoid the lines or... You might you want to use that self-service kiosk in order to maybe avoid the lines completely. Now, Americans will entrust more than 15.2 billion patch packages or pieces of mail with the U.S. Postal Service from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Today, December 19th, is anticipated to be the busiest mailing day of the holiday, pa uh, holiday season with packages, cards, and letters going out. Officials are expecting 658 million pieces of mail today. In this country, there are about 31,000 post offices, so there is definitely one near you. Just got to find it. And today is the last day you could ship a package by standard mail with the U.S. In, in the U.S. and make sure it arrives at Christmas. December 20th is the last day you could send a package by first class mail. December 21st is the last day for priority mail and procrastination nation beware. December 23rd, the last day you could ship anything really. Uh, it might cost you a little bit more, but Priority Mail Express will get it there before Christmas if you send it out on December 23rd. Some tips to make your packages arrive on time. Write clearly the addresses. Remove any batteries from inside of toys that uh, might cause problems. Also, don't re reuse the shipping boxes. The uh, It could actually fall apart and never guess on zip codes. Also, that self Serve kiosk is an option too if you want to get down here, but we put more options on wishtv.com for you. Okay, Ladies. Joe, thanks for all of that advice as people, the last minute shippers, yeah. head out. Yeah. It is now 7 12. Still ahead this morning, continued coverage of the weather alert because we are off to a dangerously cold start. Twenty-four hour news eights daybreak. All local, all morning. Hey, good morning. It is 715. We've been keeping an eye on this story for you all morning since it began. There's an Indigo bus sitting there on Meridian Street near 35th. It was on fire not too long ago uh, along the rear axle. Firefighters have contained that and left the scene. The bus is off in the right southbound lane, so you can get through at this point. But keep an eye out for icy patches there as firefighters did have to use quite a bit of water to get that fire out early this morning. Also this morning in Colts Watch, the Colts are celebrating a big win, but the team's postseason hopes have taken a big hit. Yeah, so the Colts are not mathematically able to get into the playoffs, right? I mean, they're practically eliminated. It would take a miracle for them to actually get in at this point. Right now, the Colts are in third place in the AFC South with two games to play. Colts, Texans, and Titans all won on Sunday. So even though the Colts blew out the Vikings in Minnesota with a really nice win, last weekend's loss to Houston puts the Texans in the driver's seat. 
So that's where we are now. But I will say, the little bit of positivity, it was really nice to see them play as well as they did yesterday. Yes. It's also so well. sad because they did play so well that <laughs> you're thinking, okay, okay. Too this little, too good. late. That's right. <laughs> Hey, right. Don't introduce Matt. There's still a chance. There's there's a lot of things that got to happen, <laughs> but there's still there's a chance. A chance. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying there's a chance. Okay, so my I'm best Jim Carrey voice. I'm seeing Maybe. a lot of green on your map, which is good news. Yeah, good news so far. The only really problem area, and one that could have some impacts on traffic here, is heading southbound on Meridian, and this is where we've had that uh, scene that you just showed there on 35th and Meridian from the earlier bus fire, Indigo bus fire. Now it is still blocking. As Lauren mentioned, one lane of southbound traffic. So watch out for that if you're heading that direction. Both northbound lanes are open, but it's still going to be a little bit of a slowdown if you come on down from the north side. So we'll have to see how long it takes to get that indigo bus removed from the scene. As far as we're seeing elsewhere, there's a new accident just popped up on Pendleton Pike near 56th Street. It's not plotting on the system just yet. We'll get you details on that and let you know if that becomes a problem. This accident here looks like it's on State Road 39 at I-70, not on I-70 itself. But watch out if you approach uh, I-70 from State Road 39 there. Out in the west and parts of uh, Hendricks County, there that you'll see some problems and delay so far. But really, most of the interstate system is moving along okay. Perhaps with a little bit of school systems out, we might have a little bit of lighter traffic here this week with uh, perhaps a little bit of holiday traffic, hopefully. Randy? Yeah, and Ken, uh, check it out here. Our low temperatures so far today here in the city got down to one degree below zero. First time since February 2015, we've been to, at zero or below. The average low 23, not even close to record minus 12, and Elsa back uh, way back in 1884. Little hint of daylight out there. Uh, here's the uh, live picture from Michigan Road, the city's northwest side. Can't see the uh, picture of the downtown buildings. Uh, at the airport, partly cloudy, zero. We were minus one. The winds are calm, and it feels like temperature right at zero degrees. Negative five, Lafayette, negative six in Kokomo, uh, one above Muncie, five above. That comes in from Columbus. So it is cold everywhere. Head through this afternoon. Sunshine will continue all the way through. One o'clock, 12 by three o'clock, 16, five o'clock, 18. And wind chills uh, this afternoon between zero and 10 degrees above zero. Highs elsewhere, Lafayette, Kokomo, 18, 20 Greencastle, 25 Columbus, and high of 27. That comes in from Bedford. Uh, put on your satellite radar composite map, and it is clear everywhere. Clear skies, light winds, uh, radiation of cooling. By the way, uh, Laporte, their official low, 26 degrees below zero in Laporte. I think they've warmed up now. It's about 19 below, but you can see lake effect clouds and a few snow showers into parts of Michigan. Pick it up, Futurecast, 1 o'clock, and again, a very quiet day out there. Boy, if you're traveling, great traveling weather, except for the cold temperatures, clear skies, and here's a map by midnight tonight. It'll be clear, cold again, but probably not as cold as this morning. By 6 p.m., 17 degrees. By 8 p.m., 13. Midnight temperature, 11. We should level off. I think some places may dip down into the single digit readings early tomorrow. 11 here in the city, 12 Green Castle, and a morning low on Tuesday at 14 Bedford, and also into Richmond tomorrow. Should be another great day out there. Sunshine around, maybe a few clouds out there. Uh, we're going to gradually warm things up now as we head through the uh, next several days. 32 here tomorrow, 35 Bloomington, 37. That comes in from Bedford. And a little warmer Wednesday. These are Wednesdays high. 37 here in the city and 43 Wednesday down around Bedford and Seymour. Eight day forecast, pretty quiet this week. There is a little disturbance coming down. That may generate a few snow flurries during the day on Thursday. Thursday's high 34, and then back up we go. Upper 30s to around 40 on Friday in the weekend. New storm comes in. This will have a lot more moisture with it. The timing is off. I mean, each model says, eh, it could start Saturday, maybe late Sunday. So we'll just say by Saturday night and Sunday, I uh, will see the next storm coming in. May start out as a wintry mix, but I think it's going to change over to rain uh, probably on Sunday and Sunday night. So at least right now, I don't think we're going to see a white Christmas. Rogue One decimates the competition at the movie theater, and millennials don't know what fabric softener is for. I'm Jane King. I'll have those stories coming up. It is 723 right now. Our local coverage continues with a check of this morning's business headlines. Indiana's unemployment rate hits a 15-year low. And U.S. gas prices jumped over the past two weeks. Jane King's live at the NASDAQ with those stories and so much more. Good morning. Hi, Lauren and Nina. Good morning to you. Well, Indiana's unemployment rate dropped to 4.2% in November. That is the lowest it's been since 2001. Now, the Indiana Department of Workforce Development says the state added more than 13,000 private sector jobs last month. The highest growth sectors in the state 
estate, professional and business services, financial activities, and manufacturing construction. Actually, the only part of the job market that had a loss in jobs last month. Well, the average price of regular grade gasoline has jumped six cents nationally over the past two weeks. So the national average is now 226 a gallon. Industry analyst Trilby Lumberg said the hike is mostly due to that agreement on November 30th by the oil producing countries to cut output. In central Indiana, AAA says the current average is 233. A week ago, it was 221. So huge jump there. Now, four more restaurants at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom will begin serving wine and beer December 23rd. Tony's Town Square Restaurant, Liberty Tree Tavern, Jungle Navigation Skipper Canteen, and Cinderella's Royal Table will serve the beverages daily during lunch and dinner. They will be join. Uh, they will they will join be our guest restaurants, uh, which in 2012 became the first Magic Kingdom eateries to serve alcohol. And the change comes after requests from numerous guests. Okay, The Force Awakens. It is not, but Rogue One got away clean with 155 million at the North American box office this weekend. So a robust start for the movie. It probably guarantees the first Star Wars story will not be the last. The 155 million figure makes Rogue One the third highest grossing domestic movie this year, at least weekend opening. So it was behind Captain America Civil War and Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Well, stocks getting a little further away from Dow 20,000, at least as of Friday. Tech and bank stocks pulled back. The Dow down about eight or nine points, finished at 19,843. We are looking higher today. So we are starting the final full week of trading of 2016. We'll see what happens. Live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Jane King. Back to you. Hey, Jane, we're hearing less people are buying fabric softener these days. What's up with that? <sighs> Yeah, kids these days, uh, they're just not using <laughs> fabric softener. Uh, the Wall Street Journal says brands like Procter & Gamble, which owns Bounce, Downey & Gain, just aren't selling like they used to. It is blaming the 20 and 30-somethings for this. Hmm. Now, Procter & Gamble does plan to step up its marketing tactics to millennials. They just can't quite figure out what it's used for. <laughs> that's so funny. Seems quite self explanatory. Yeah, that's what we were saying during the break. It, does. Don't, it softens the fabric. So. Fabric softener. Okay. Right. Do but you I think it? it's not necessary? I actually do. I don't, yeah. actually. Oh, I don't. okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> I, I really don't even know if it makes a difference. I think I just bought it on a yeah. whim a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to put it in my laundry. Makes us feel better. <laughs> All right, okay. Thanks, Jane. Right. It is Thanks. 726. Uh -huh. Okay, our weather alert coverage continues this morning. It is brutally cold outside, and our mobile news tracker is driving around in it. Randy is back in a moment with the update on your forecast. We post breaking news and story updates 24 hours a day on Facebook. Join the conversation by following Wish TV. Store here and across the country is the weather. Following a weekend of death and gridlock across the roads, we're off to a dangerously cold start again. New overnight, seven people are recovering after an overnight cave rescue in southern Indiana. Plus, why one lawmaker is calling for a nationwide recall of thousands of e cigarettes. Good morning to you. Seconds away from 7 30 on a Monday morning, December 19th to date. And you said it, it is dangerously cold outside. Let's head straight over to Randy Hollis for the first look at the forecast. Yeah, hi, Nina. Hi there, Lauren. It is uh, very, very cold out there. We've gone up one degree since last hour, but still bitterly cold. Uh, in fact, temps this morning are as much as 15, 20, 26 degrees colder this morning compared to uh, Sunday morning at this time. Actual numbers zero here in the city, likewise, Green Castle, five below Lafayette, six below Kokomo, and to get up to around the port, they were down to 26 degrees below zero. Other numbers for you Jamestown, Zionsville, four below. It is two below in Fishers and Cicero, and right at zero, also zero. That comes in from McCordsville. Can see some daylight out there. There's some high clouds kind of rolling in. At the airport, we'll go partly cloudy, zero degrees. The winds are calm and relative humidity, 76%. Sally picture not showing much going on. In fact, we ought to see a lot of sunshine. Much of the uh, Ohio Valley back on the Plain States all day long today. And by 1 o'clock, 12 degrees, 3 o'clock, 16, 5 o'clock, 18. Wind chills this afternoon between 0 and 10 degrees above zero. In a few minutes overall, it's kind of a quiet week ahead. A pattern change is coming our way. We'll see mild at Pacific Air, and I think we'll see a new storm coming in by the weekend. We'll have the eight-day forecast in just a little bit. Ken's for the traffic. Ken, how are we doing? 
Well, Randy, it's uh, been a pretty decent commute, but actually our biggest problems so far have been vehicle fires. And actually, Mobile News Tracker on their way to a report of another vehicle fire. They're basically heading northbound on 65 on the northwest side, and they're going to a location that we'll show you here in just a second of the report of the vehicle fire. So let's go to the traffic system and take a look at what we're looking at. This is the earlier of Indigo bus fire that took place at 35th and Meridian. Now, we're seeing the traffic's moving along okay, so perhaps that bus has been removed. There weren't any additional fire vehicles on the scene, but there were uh, restrictions on one lane southbound because of that Indigo bus was still located there, but hopefully that's been removed from the scene. Here's the report of this other vehicle fire. This is Lafayette Road at 52nd on the northwest side. See a little bit of restriction on the traffic there coming southbound and northbound, so our mobile news tracker will be there in just a bit and check out that scene and let us know if there are any problems. So in the meanwhile, if you're coming on down from the north side, northwest side, I-65 from Whitestown Parkway to Indianapolis, 16-minute drive, Meridian from Carmel to downtown, no big slowdowns at the moment, so that's good news. 24-minute drive is not bad for the 7:30 half hour. Also looking good. I-69 from Fishers at 4:65. Your drive time's at five minutes. Okay, thanks so much, Ken. It's 7:32 now. This weekend, freezing rain wreaked havoc on Central Indiana's interstate system. Hundreds of people were stranded on icy roads for hours during the overnight on Saturday. Yeah, that's right. That's just part of a brutal blast of cold air creating deadly conditions across the country. Reed Binion reports. Basically, you're flying in a big loop up in the air and just waiting to land. Travelers in Houston, among thousands across the country affected by flight cancellations and delays amid an Arctic blast that turned deadly this weekend. At least 15 people killed as a result of the storm. Cold temperatures resulting in freezing rain that coated highways across the nation. In New Mexico, a 40-vehicle wreck shutting down parts of the interstate amid icy conditions. In Baltimore, a 55-vehicle crash on Interstate 95, leaving at least two people dead and upwards of a dozen hospitalized after a fuel truck flipped over a median and burst into flames. Motorists stranded for hours. In nearby Virginia, another flip tanker. We had a fully loaded gasoline tanker, approximately 8,000 gallons, that overturned. And then another vehicle ran into the side of it because it couldn't stop. That was just one of dozens of accidents in the area over the weekend, including a multi-vehicle crash that left one person dead in Fairfax County. Forecasters say more freezing rain is on the way Monday from Maine and as far south as Tennessee and North Carolina. I'm Reed Binion reporting. All right, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the top local stories that we're watching for you this morning. If you're just joining us, officials are still asking drivers to be extra careful across the majority of central Indiana. Travel advisories are in effect for most counties except for Marion. Today, the final chapter in a story we've been following for more than four years. Montserrat Shirley is going to learn her fate for her role in the deadly 2012 Richmond Hill home explosion. A sentencing hearing starts for her at 9 o'clock this morning, and we're going to be there to bring you live coverage. Also today, the Electoral College formally votes to make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. In some cities, anti-Trump rallies are planned at state capitals. Republican electors say they've been swamped with emails, phone calls, and letters urging them not to support Trump. The president-elect has already criticized that effort via Twitter. Also this morning, we're looking back at the life and legacy of former Indianapolis Mayor Bill Hudnud. Now, plans are underway for two public memorial services, and leaders across Indiana are talking about Hudnut's impact on the city. We've put all of that information for you online at wishtv.com. And today, the U.S. Postal Service says today will likely be its busiest mailing day of the year. Officials say they expect the 12 million customers will visit the nation's 31,000 post offices. All new overnight, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources says it is finished rescuing a group of people trapped in a cave. So this is happening in southern Indiana. The rescue operation finished up about 3 o'clock this morning. The group of seven people were supposed to leave Binkley's Cave near Corridon on Sunday morning after a 15-hour trip. DNR says high water levels in the cave hampered search efforts. The group's being treated for hypothermia and exposure. It is 7.35 now. In Aleppo, Syria, state news says someone is standing in the way of evacuation efforts in the city. Dozens of buses are in Aleppo now helping people leave the war zone. State media say someone has been setting some of the evacuation buses on fire. So far, all of the buses have been empty at the time. The United Nations says thousands of people are still waiting to be evacuated. The U.N. Security Council is set to vote today on a possible resolution to help monitor the evacuation process. 
In Little Rock, Arkansas, police say a three-year-old is dead after he was shot by an angry driver. Police say the child's grandmother told officers she had honked at a man stopped at a stop sign. She says the man got out of his vehicle and fired one shot. She thought it was fired into the air, but later realized her grandson had been hit. People living in the area say the violence has them worried about the safety of their own children. Taking a person who got four kids, four girls, um, touch me, touch me a lot, because um, um, you want your kids safe. Police are still searching for the shooter. A New York senator is calling for thousands of e-cigarettes to be recalled after a series of explosions. Senator Chuck Schumer says the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and the Food and Drug Administration should recall the products to research a cause behind the explosions. Schumer specifically suggested researching if certain brands were more prone to exploding than others. It's time to take a hard look at requiring a recall of certain brands if they are much more likely to explode than others. While dozens, with dozens and dozens of exploding incidents, the Fed should review whether there's a pattern. Just on Thursday, a fire from an e-cigarette caused a plane flying from Dallas to Indianapolis to make an emergency landing. Officials say the device started a fire in a bathroom. Nobody was hurt. It is 737 right now. Still ahead, a look back at one of the most iconic women of old Hollywood. First, though, more local news for you, including the opening of a brand new bridge in Indiana. Find out the reason behind the historic name. Good morning. Welcome back to Daybreak. It's 740 Traffic Watch. Do have a couple of incidents plotted here, but most of the interstate travel has been so far so good. And although we have one accident that's supposedly on the interstate in the northwest side, we'll investigate that for you. Come up for you here in a little bit. So cold, I can't even talk here this morning. Even though it's comfortable <laughs> here in the studio, there's no excuse. <laughs> well, it's okay. We'll give you a, a mulligan on this one. 740 right now. More local news as Wish TV continues to cover all of central Indiana. We start in Johnson County this morning. Today, the sheriff's office is scheduled to talk more about a murder investigation. This weekend, we told you that police arrested Joseph Avart for killing Andrew Perry. Perry's mother found him dead inside a Greenwood home earlier this month. The sheriff says Perry died from blunt force trauma. We'll update you today with any new information. Purdue University students will not have to pay any extra for room and board next year. The Purdue Board of Trustees approved keeping the housing costs the same for the fifth year in a row. And rates at Purdue's satellite campus in Northwest Hammond will also stay flat for the second year in a row. Prices did go up at the Fort Wayne campus by about 2.1%. In southern Indiana, a new bridge connecting Indiana and Kentucky is now open and has a new name. Uh, the East End Crossing is now the Lewis and Clark Bridge. It is named after the famed American explorers who began their journey to map the country on the Ohio River. It opened to traffic Sunday. The $763 million bridge took more than three years to build. It offers a bypass around downtown Louisville traffic. In Jennings County, the deadline is today for the County Council's Christmas Basket Program. According to our partners at the Republic, only a little more than half of the $20,000 goal has been actually raised. And the paper says the program is designed to provide food and toys for families in need during the holidays. The program's coordinator, Kitty Shepard, says she's confident the community will raise the money in time. She says the council will likely also keep accepting donations past the official deadline. It's 741. And it is just zero degrees. We were actually below zero. Randy, we're back at zero. Please tell me it's going to get better than this. Well, yeah, that's, that's for sure here, Nina. We do have big changes ahead here down the road. Not today. Pretty cold out there. High here this afternoon. 18 Indy, 14 Chicago. However, the jet stream is going to kind of flatten out. 32 Tuesday and 37 for a high during the day on Wednesday. Will we hit the 40s later this week? We'll have the eight-day forecast in just a bit. And welcome back. This morning we're looking back at the life of Hollywood legend Jean Jacques Gabor. She died Sunday at the age of 99. Rick Damagella reports. She became one of the most recognizable figures in Hollywood with her trademark gowns, elaborate jewelry, and Hungarian accent. Famous for being famous. While Zsa Zsa Gabor's acting career was perhaps undistinguished, the former beauty queen's outspoken ways grabbed headlines. Well, I always tell the truth. That's why everybody hates me, because I tell the truth. People don't like to hear the truth. 
Gabor and her sisters Magda and Ava immigrated to the United States from Hungary, but unlike Ava, who starred on TV's Green Acres, Zsa didn't immediately have showbiz aspirations. A five-year marriage to hotel mogul Conrad Hilton produced a daughter, Francesca. That made her a great aunt to a later generation of celebrity sisters, Paris and Nikki Hilton. After she divorced Hilton, Zsa married actor George Sanders. She said that union became her catalyst to fame. We put me in a talk show as Mrs. George Sanders. And next day, I got live cover, look cover, and all the covers. MGM approached me, MGM Studio, if I want to work for them. I said yes. Zsa, Zsa went on to make more than 50 films, including 1952's Moulin Rouge. She also appeared in the Orson Welles classic Touch of Evil. But it was her off-screen appearances that grabbed the most attention. In 1989, Gabor generated a media sensation when she was convicted of slapping a Beverly Hills policeman. She was sentenced to three days behind bars. Gabor parlayed the attention into TV and movie appearances, including a cameo in The Naked Gun Two and a Half. In fact, it was once joked that Gabor played herself more often than any other role. The acting roles dwindled in her later years, but that didn't keep Gabor's name out of the press. A car accident in 2002 left her partially paralyzed, and she was subsequently in and out of the hospital for a series of health scares. But it was her marriage to Prince Frederick von Anhalt, her ninth husband, that provided plenty of bizarre tabloid fodder. Von Anhalt, who married Gabor in 1986, once claimed to be the father of Anna Nicole Smith's daughter after the actress's death. Paternity tests later disproved that claim. In 2011, he announced an unusual plan to make Gabor, who was 94 years old at the time, a mother again, using an egg donor and a surrogate mother, a plan Gabor's daughter Francesca called weird. It was one of many public disputes Francesca had with von Anhalt, whom she once accused of taking Gabor away from her. The two eventually reached a truce over Gabor's care in July of 2012. As her personal matters still made headlines well into her 90s, Zsa, Zsa Gabor will perhaps be remembered as a professional celebrity who seemed happiest living life on the front page. The socialite. Yeah, I mean, and, and you think about it, how attention-grabbing she was in, in every sense of the word. Yeah. Know? I learned yep. so much about her during that story. I did too. <laughs> I did too, and I and I remember her sister playing uh, the role on Green Acres. Right. Yeah. Remember the Green Acres is a place to be. Do, 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 do. So, but anyway, I did I did learn a lot from that from yeah. that story. Yeah. You can so. keep singing if you want to. Uh, I forgot the rest of the words. It's been that long. Uh, farm living is the life for me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, I, I used to watch it as a kid many many years many years ago. So. <laughs> you were doing Daybreak back then. I right? really was. Yeah, I was black and white back then, but yeah. we were doing it. Then. And so anyway, Lauren and Nini or Nini. Nini, oh, I like Nini. it. We already call her Nini. Zsa Zsa. I like that. My, Nini. my mother, when she was living, that was her name for grandma was Nini. Okay. So I gotta, you know, watch Nina yeah. and Nini. Yeah, I'll take so, it. Oh, there's always <laughs> Nini there. So anyway, hey, let's show you these stats here. It is very cold. Uh, we got down to minus one last time we hit zero back on February 24th of 2015. By the way, Laporte, they were down to 26 degrees below zero actual temperature. They warmed up to minus 19, and we are warmer here than in Bear, Alaska. Bear, Alaska last hour was one degree above zero. Outside right now, some daybreak out there right at zero. Fortunately, no wind, so it feels like temperature is zero degrees. Zero here, negative five Lafayette, negative six Kokomo, one above Muncie, and the warm spot, Richmond, you're at six degrees above zero. Head through the day today, should see sunshine all the way through, one o'clock 12 by three o'clock 16, five o'clock 18. Wind shows this afternoon between zero and 10 degrees above zero. Other highs, 18 Kokomo, 20 Greencastle, and a high of 27. That comes in from Bedford and also Seymour, too. Sally picture does indicate clear skies out there, lake effect clouds, a few snow showers in parts of Michigan, but really from Indiana westward back on the Plain States, uh, you're going to see plenty of sunshine during the day today. One o'clock this afternoon, clear skies. Seven o'clock tonight, it should be a clear night. It'll be cold again, but not as cold as this morning. Temperature wise, 6 p.m., 17, 8 p.m., 13, midnight temperature 11. Got a bottom out there. Temperatures tomorrow morning probably down between, uh, oh, the upper single digits and lower teens. 11 here in the city, 13 in Shelbyville. Now, during the day on Tuesday, we are going to start to see a pattern change. Mild and Pacific air will return. Here's a map by noon tomorrow. Maybe a few clouds around, but still a lot of sunshine getting on through. Highs tomorrow will be warmer 
32 here in the city, 35 below and 37. That comes in from Bedford. And even warmer weather will return on Wednesday. Upper 30s and lower 40s. 37 Indy Wednesday, 40 Bloomington and 43. That comes in from Bedford. Eight day forecast, pretty quiet all week long. A weak disturbance coming down. That may generate a few snow flurries on Thursday. No accumulation, no big deal. High temperature of 34 degrees. Maybe a little pocket of cooler air coming in. And then we go back up into the upper 30s to right around 40. We'll keep Friday dry, 38 degrees. We'll keep Saturday dry. The next storm comes in sometime during the weekend. The timing is all over the place. But uh, maybe Saturday night, Sunday. It may start out as a wintry mix. But I think it's going to change over to rain here probably on Christmas Day and Christmas night. And we should be above freezing with highs in the upper 30s to around 40. So I know, Ken, you're, you're shedding a few tears here that we're not going to have a white Christmas. I know that really. Well, I'm sorry, did you guarantee that? 98%. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll no well, I won't shed tears yet. Then. <laughs> there you go. All right, Randy, here we go. Let's take a look at what we're seeing. Traffic watch at 751. Here's what we're seeing so far. We've had a couple of incidents that have popped up. We're seeing some slowdown on the northwest side, but uh, there's a report of an accident at 465 southbound at 86th Street, but I've been looking at in-dot cameras and have yet to be able to uh, find the accident itself. We do see, well, the picture's frozen there. Probably too cold for the camera to operate there. We are seeing a bit of a slowdown, but actually the slowdown is northbound as you make to turn the 465, which is actually normal for this time of morning. You do see a little bit of a slowdown. It's just one of the several areas, and there you see the northeast side, other locations where we see some typical slowdowns. So it looks like I suspect we're seeing a little bit of lighter volume here with the holiday. I-65 coming in from Whitestown to Indianapolis, still a 16-minute drive. We've seen a little bit slower traffic coming down Meridian from Carmel to downtown, but 28 minutes not bad for this time of morning. And I-69 from Fitcher is down to 465. Your drive time still short, five minutes. Monday at 9 on Andy Star, our studio will be dripping in diamonds as we show you how to splurge this holiday. Plus, the chef from Delicia will be cooking in our kitchen. How you can enjoy a meal for a good cause. That and more on Witch TV City Style. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> I love his echo right there. <laughs> and today the Colts will take some time off the field to spread holiday cheer to patients at Riley Hospital for Children. Some players, cheerleaders, and the Colts mascot Blue will be delivering gifts and singing Christmas carols starting at 10.30 this morning. This is a look at the event last year. The visit is an annual tradition started by Colts owner Jim Ursay more than a decade ago. I love the holiday spirit that they're getting mm -hmm. into. And we are starting off very, very cold this morning. Uh, zero. That's it. That's all we have. <laughs> you know, that's actually an improvement, if you can believe it. Uh, some of our, well, Indianapolis was down to a negative one. Right. Other outlying areas were negative four. Unbelievable. Yeah, Very so cold start. bundle up, bundle up, bundle up, bundle up. Need to do that. It is now 756 on the dot. And we have another hour of local news for you. Randy Ken and I are going to bring you those headlines, including a Muncie school back in session today after heating problems canceled class last week. Coming up, how students will stay warm on this dangerously cold day. And a popular downtown bar is back open after part of its roof collapsed this weekend. Talking about the Eagle, I'll tell you how it's serving customers today despite the damage. We post breaking news and story updates 24 hours a day on Facebook. Join the conversation by following Wish TV.